Hello there, it's your friend Phil, Project Management Trainer and Coach. Today we're going to be talking about earned value measurement. Now, earned value is a much wider topic than you see in the PMBOK guide. In fact, I would like to encourage you to take a look at the practice standard for earned value management. If you are a member of the PMI, you can download this. Also, if you want to study earned value further, you might want to read my book, Earned Value Basics. But we're going a little bit deeper into earned value today to talk about the different ways earned value can be calculated. According to the PMI, the earned value methods are generally assigned and applied to work packages, as you know. Each work package has its own unique characteristics. And therefore, there's not one single best way to measure progress. But in different industries and with different levels of awareness, some ways may seem more appropriate than others depending on the work being done. So there are three general methods for calculating work performance. One, discrete effort. Two, apportioned effort. And three, level of effort. And each one of these has various measurement methods. So let's talk about them one by one. Discrete effort. Discrete effort, according to the PMI, is an activity that can be planned and measured and yields a specific output. So when we talk about discrete effort, it's directly related to specific end products or services. And we're talking about distinct measurable points. We're talking about distinct and discrete outputs that result from a discrete effort being applied to the task at hand. So under discrete effort, there are four principal measurement methods available. These four measurement methods are as follows. Fixed formula, weighted milestone, percent complete, and physical measurement. We're going to tackle these one by one. One, fixed formula. Two, weighted milestone. Three, percent complete. And four, physical measurement. Now let's talk about fixed formula first. Bear in mind that all of these methods have their pros and cons, their pluses and minuses, depending on the project you're working on. But let's talk about using a fixed formula for earned value, because really that's what it is, talking about progress, you're measuring progress, you're measuring percent complete, it boils down to you measuring the earned value. So let's talk about fixed formula. Fixed formula pretty much assigns a percentage to the value of work at the start of the milestone and the end of a milestone. Some people get a little bit creative with it, but typically you would see fixed formula being used in a 50-50 split. So you get 50 when you start the task and you get the remaining 50% when you end. So it's called 50-50. 50% of the task is deemed earned when you start and the other 50 is deemed earned when you end. Or we have the 25-75. 25% 25 of the value is received when you start and the remaining 75 is received when you end. And those are typical methods for, as the PMI puts it, small and short duration work. So as a sanity check, at any given point in time, adding up the milestones should give you the budget value. In other words, the PV for that time period. The choice of a fixed formula should be made based on the nature of work being accomplished so that the resulting PV and EV really demonstrates how work is being executed. So that's your fixed formula. The word formula makes you think you would see something different, but that's pretty much it. If you look at the PMI's practice standard for earned value management, 
in figure 7-2, an illustration is given at how you could have a 0-100 formula, 0 at the start and everything is earned at the finish, or a 50-50, or a 25-75, depending on the nature of work being done. In this example, using the fixed formula, earn value is credited 25% at the beginning and 75% when the work is completed. Very straightforward. Now with the fixed formula method, the 0100 technique is different from other techniques. The 0100 method doesn't allow any credit to be earned until the work is actually completed. And this method is quite aggressive, but it's used for the receipt of materials and only on work packages that are planned to start and end within one reporting time period. The cost account manager and the project manager may agree to any formula to calculate earned value as long as it produces verifiable results that meet the objectives of the project. Let's go to the next one, weighted milestone. Now a milestone is a significant event in the project that signifies that something has been achieved. But you can take these milestones and weight milestones within a work package. The weighted milestone method divides the work package into measurable segments and each of these segments ends with a milestone. Then we assign a weight, a weighted value to each of these milestones. So let's say you've got a work package. You could divide your work package into three milestones. You could say, I'm going to break down this work package by 60% in milestone one, 30% in milestone two, 10% in milestone three. For example, we would refer to that as weighting the milestones. Milestone one is the largest weight, milestone two, 30% the next, and 10% for milestone three, for example. So depending on how much value is being achieved or obtained from the milestones, you can weight milestones. The weighted milestone method is more suitable for long duration work packages. According to the PMI, those with longer than two time periods that have intermediate and tangible results or milestones. To be used effectively, the weighted milestone technique requires at least one interim milestone for each reporting period. And it doesn't permit partial credit for incomplete milestones. It's an all or nothing. The PMI show an example of this in figure 7-3 if you care to look at the practice guide for earned value. So that's the weighted milestone. Just remember, it breaks the milestones down into weighted chunks. And it depends on the nature of work and the project manager and stakeholders involved in the project. The next one is the one that we know very well in the world of the PMI. It's called the percent complete. And the percent complete method shows an estimate of the percentage of work that is complete at the end of each measurement period. Now this has to be used with caution. You want an expert and the project manager or whoever is doing this needs to be doing this with work that has truly been completed and measured to the best of their ability. It's used based on quantifiable work completion. So we really want to make sure if we are spitting out a percent complete, it truly is 30% done if we say it is. The planned value is determined by the time phased resources required to complete the work. The earned value is determined by multiplying the work package budget at completion. Note I said work package, not the entire project. The work package budget at completion times the percent complete. And you hear this formula being used all the time. Earned value is equal to BAC times percent complete. Really what we're saying is earned value for whatever 
proportion of work, whatever work package, is equal to the planned value, if you will, for that work package times percent complete, or if you want to use the word BAC, budget at completion, for that work package times percent complete, not the entire project. It's very important that when you use BAC and EV, you know what you're talking about, because oftentimes people confuse BAC with PV. Okay, so if you're using percent complete, you must be using the corresponding planned value or budget at completion for whatever portion of work you are estimating the earned value for. Very important. And that's pretty much what it is. Percent complete times plan value. Let's move on to the fourth one, physical measurement. Now the physical measurement, unlike the weighted milestone and the percent complete, can be related more explicitly to the completion of the work. Measurement can include any units that can be explicitly related to the completion of the work. For example, length of cable laid, that's straight up, that's understandable. What about the area and quantity of concrete cured? That's a physical measurement. What about the quantity of spokes? In the case of bicycle wheels. So the bottom line is we're not going by an estimated measure. We're going by real hard physical measurements that are right there in your face. So with that, we have come to the end of the first approach here, discrete effort. We're talking about a very specific output, something that can be measured and something that we know we have achieved when we have achieved it. So under discrete effort, we have fixed formula, weighted milestone, percent complete and physical measurement. We're going to the second one now, and this is called apportioned effort. Apportioned effort is used for work with a direct supportive relationship to discrete work. Did you catch that? Apportioned effort is used for work that is supportive in nature to discrete work. The value for the support task is determined based on the earned value of the referenced base activity. Apportioned effort can include work such as quality assurance, inspection, and testing activities. An apportioned work effort is estimated as a percentage of the referenced discrete work effort. The percent allocation to discrete effort is used when there are sufficient performance records and knowledge of the interrelationship between the apportioned effort and the discrete effort. The discrete effort at the second measurement point is, for example, 5,200. The apportioned effort is 10% of the discrete effort. Well, 10% of 5,200 is 520, and that becomes the earned value for the associated apportioned effort. Last but not least, we have level of effort, LOE. Level of effort activities do not directly produce definitive end products. I worked in a firm where there was so much level of effort and that was predominantly what was in the contract, service contract for certain vehicles. Level of effort activities don't directly produce definitive end products that can be delivered or measured objectively. LOE work, according to the PMI, such as project or program management and contract management, consume project resources and should be included in earned value management planning. So when you think about LOE, a planned value is assigned to each LOE task for each measurement period. In other words, I expect that our service engineers would spend 2,000 hours servicing XYZ aircraft. Or our support team will spend this amount of time servicing these customers for this time period. And that's pretty much how LOE works. So in the grand scheme of things, big picture, 
discrete effort, a portion effort, level of effort. Under discrete effort, you've got multiple ways of calculating that. And under apportioned effort, it's a straight up multiplication of percent. Last but not least, we've got level of effort. And those are the three approaches to calculating earned value in your projects. To learn more about earned value, feel free to visit www.praiseon.com. Ask questions if you would like your team to be trained in earned value management. And if you'd like to pick up my book, go to tinyurl.com forward slash EVM basics. Thank you for your audience and all the best as you manage using earned value management.